Welcome back. You're watching the CNBC TV 18 live coverage from our budget headquarters. We continue to be joined by the budget makers. The team from North Block is here with us. We have with us the CBIC chairman, Sanjay Kumar Agarwal, and the CBDT chairman, Mr. Ravi Agarwal. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us on the program. Let me start by asking both of you about the rationale as far as the cut in customs duty on gold, silver, and platinum was concerned. I mean, you know, Titan was the stock of the day today on the back of that uh, cut. Let me start by asking you about the rationale behind this cut at this point in time. Yeah, let me tell you, Sharin, that duty on gold was increased in 2022 July, and it was increased to 15%. At that time, CAD, that current account deficit, the position was worsening right. because the crude prices, international crude prices were increasing, and it reached to the level of 120 US dollar per barrel. And uh, that was leading to worsening of CAD. And because of that measure, the imports of gold came down. But again, from the next year, the volumes started increasing. And gold started coming in form other than bullion. Mm. Uh, so that is one of, one of the reasons. And other than that, the most important reason is that gold is the raw material for gems and jewelry sector, yeah. which is very important sector, which provides a lot of employment, mm. something like 50 lakh people are working in that sector. Mm. And it is very important sector for exports also. Almost 8% of India's export is from this sector. So these, that was also one of the reasons to make the legal gold made available to that sector. Okay. So it was thought that duty rate can be cut down because uh, and to curb that the gold which was coming through other than legal means mm. and by subterfuge. So it will impact that also. Okay. So that is that explains the sharp cut as far as the customs duty is concerned. One, because of this being a, a job-creating sector as well as the sector with export potential. But I also want to understand from you, sir, in the context of what we've seen the government do in hiking long-term capital gains, on hiking FNO, uh, the STT on FNO uh, trade, uh, on hiking short-term capital gains as well. So people are saying that, look, you're hiking capital gains there, the tax there, but you're bringing down a significant portion of the duty as far as gold is concerned. How do you explain the two? You see, you see uh, so far as uh, hiking of uh, the capital gains is concerned, let us see the pattern and the profile of the people who are actually uh, would be mostly hit. Uh, that is basically high end, high net worth individuals, because what we found was that a significant percentage of the people who would be actually, for, for whom this uh, tax rate would uh, adversely maybe impact, is uh, high net worth. Mm. Right? But so far as the common man is concerned, the middle class is concerned, for them, this uh, regime, the new regime that is being proposed, is actually beneficial. Mm. The common perception at present is that, okay, that we have reduced or done away with the indexation. indexation. But, yeah. but then uh, we have also reduced the rate. Mm. From 20% it is 12.5%, mm. right? And if you compare the, the value of the assets that have gone up in the past about 8, 10 years, one would find that actually the capital gains that would come uh, or the tax that would uh, be there uh, would be much less mm. than uh, what would be there was there in the uh, indexation regime. Okay. So, for example, in the last 10 years, if an asset has actually the value has grown up, say, by uh, three times, right, the new regime would be actually beneficial. Okay. So, that way, uh, I think uh, people would actually. Once Benefit. they start analyzing, they, they would definitely... That, that, that was the case that Mr. Somanathan was also making here, that it would be uh, beneficial for most yes. for most people and across most asset classes. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to understand from you a couple of announcements that came in uh, from the budget and this uh, review uh, of the Income Tax Act, a six-month period being given by the Finance Minister as a fairly daunting and audacious task. Uh, explain to us what will be the thrust of this review beyond simplification. So one is, of course, simplification. And the other is, how do we actually make it uh, simple for the taxpayer, the common taxpayer, to, uh, to comply with the uh, regulations? Uh, can we make it, uh, uh, so for example, over a period of time, what has happened is uh, the amendments have taken place as and when situations arose. And that has made the act bulky. So can we make the language of the act also easy okay. for people to comprehend that language. So that is also one thing. How do we present the 
you see, provisions, hmm. so that it becomes easy for a common uh, person to understand and to follow the regulations. Okay, uh, let's talk about the customs duty changes and many customs duties changes. Uh, of course, the inversions have uh, been tried to be corrected this time around as well. Uh, on balance, the impact of uh, the duty corrections as well as the changes announced? Yeah, I would like to mention that uh, you will see a definite direction in the way the budget proposals have been formulated. And these uh, proposals have been formulated to give impetus to domestic manufacturing, strengthening and diversity of supply chains and encour encouraging the exports to make them more competitive in, mm. in the international market. In addition to that, uh, there was some onslaught on uh, hugely cheap imports. So there also the corrections have been made. Likewise, there were certain items where there was inversion in duty right. structures. So that has also been corrected. To elaborate further on that, I would like to mention that duty has been made nil on 25 critical minerals. Mm. These minerals are not mined in India. Right. And it was very important to bring the uh, rate of duty nil on these minerals so that these can be processed and can be used in the downstream industries, okay. which are very important for India, like renewable energy, electronics, defense, and space sectors. So by bringing down the duty to nil on mm. this critical animal, mm. so that kind of manufacturing impetus has been provided to the domestic industry. Likewise, on to promote the exports, uh, the inputs which are used for those produce yeah. have been brought down to nil. So I will give you one example of that. Uh, there is a lot of shrimp export from India. Yes. And for that, the shrimp feed, there the rate of duty has been reduced from 15% to 5%. Yes. And the inputs which are used in manufacturing of that shrimp feed, there the duty has been brought down to nil. So this is all to promote the exports of shrimp from India. Yes, and, and found a mention also in the budget speech, uh, by the way. So uh, that, that, was in, that was interesting to see. Yeah, likewise to correct the inversion on uh, import duty, MDI is one of the important raw material. Mm which is again not manufactured in India. Yeah. And it is used in making the spandex yarn. On a spandex yarn, the rate of duty was 5%, yeah. whereas on MDI, it was 7.5%. So there also the rate of duty has been brought down oh, to yeah. correct that inversion. So similarly, there were certain items like ammonium nitrate and then uh, this flax banners. They are the very cheap imports were coming, maybe because the industry in the country was having some advantage because mm. the yeah. input were produced in those countries, like right. natural gas was produced in some countries, and it was being imported from those countries, and therefore the industry, which is manufacturing ammonium nitrate in India, was facing a lot so, of so issues. So do you believe that most of the cost correction has been done with respect to at least correcting the inversions? So we have tried to do the correction as far as possible, but there were certain issues, that because if the inversion is coming because of rate of duty being nil under some free trade agreement. Okay. So there it is difficult to do the correction. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I want to address, uh, you know, the big uh, uh, positive that's come in, which is the abolition of the angel tax. This has been on the tax wish list of the startup VC community for very long. Uh, finally, it's been done away with, as well as parity uh, coming in on capital gains for unlisted uh, uh, shares. So that's another piece of good news. Uh, the impact of this now, do you believe that the funding winter that we've gone through will finally, will finally lead to spring? Yeah, so basically this was this is uh, an attempt to open up, you see, the sector and uh, to bring in more investment because uh, otherwise what was per being perceived was that, well, because of this, uh, you see, provision in the act, uh, there was some hesitation in uh, this investment uh, coming. So uh, we hope that uh, with, the, you see, this initiative of the government, uh, the in we will get more investment and more business. From outside. Well, that certainly is the hope. Let's talk about GST, sir, and you know what the road ahead looks like as far as the GST is concerned. Obviously, not something that the budget will take up. This is a matter for the GST Council to take up. Uh, but the expectation that we are going to see more items being brought under uh, the uh, GST regime, especially the items that are under the VAT regime of state governments at this point in time, has any formal proposal moved on natural gas, etc., at this point? Not so far. Not so far. Do you expect it to move uh, anytime soon? Uh, we are open to it, uh, provided the states, they are also uh, 
interested in bringing certain items on which either the excise duty is levied or wet is levied. So if GST is to be expanded on that, because uh, these items fetch like petroleum, there are five items on petroleum, crude, petrol, diesel, mm. natural gas, and ATF. So out of that petrol and diesel, that fetches a lot of revenue, central excise duty yeah. to the central government. Likewise, it fetches a lot of revenue the to state. the state government. So nobody wants to give up control. So, so, so uh, it's not giving up the con control. It is basically the revenue which is yeah. coming from these stream. Yeah. So how to compensate for that? So, 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 so that no is an issue. But we, are not, but we are not averse to the idea of bringing, if not all, yeah. but maybe some. Some items. Some are items under, under GST. Uh, may, may I ask you whether this is accurate or not, that uh, we are not going to be seeing GST numbers being reported every month? Earlier, we used to maybe giving the press release, but if somebody wants the numbers, those numbers are in the public domain. <laughs> no, I'm just asking because we've gotten so used to reporting GST numbers month after month. So what's now the GST run rate expectation from here? We've been doing 1.7, 1.7 plus. What's the expectation from here, sir? In the GST, as far as our budgetary estimates for GST collection is concerned, it is 11%. And the GST... In fact, I would like to mention that last year, the GDP growth, the nominal GDP growth was 9.6%, yeah. whereas the GST, gross GST collection has gone up by 11.7%. Mm. If you look into those, these two figures, the tax buoyancy was something mm. like 1.21, mm. which was very good. And that gives us a lot, lot of satisfaction that the compliance levels are going up. Yeah. And as the GST is having inherent systemic efficiencies, so all that was that is leading to very good tax buoyancy. But I would like to mention that GST collections are again intricately linked with gross GDP. Absolutely, they're, they're linked to the way that the, the, the economy the, performs. Yeah, the yeah. way the economy performs, it is intricately linked but to case, nominal GDP. Case, but case for rationalization, and do you believe that we're any closer to moving towards rate rationalization on GST? On rates on GST, there is already a GOM, that is a group of ministers, which has been constituted, and because of certain changes that has been reconstituted in yeah. the last yeah. uh, GST council meeting, that has been approved. That committee, that group of ministers will be looking into the rates, mm. and I think the report will come soon. One, one final question on GST, and this has to do specifically as far as this online gaming business is concerned, which is, I know, a matter in the Supreme Court. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, it's given the government a significant amount of uh, revenue as well. Uh, but, you know, with all of the clarifications being sought and, you know, the litigation that's currently underway, what is the thinking now on how to address this? Uh, as far as online gaming is concerned, we are finding no difficulty because after the uh, certain amendments which were carried out with prospective effect yeah. have been implemented, the revenue, GST revenue which is coming from online gaming sector has gone up many fold. Yes. So, so as such, no issue has been reported to us that there is any kind of problem okay. happening in that particular sector. Okay. Uh, let me ask you as far as direct taxes are concerned, of course uh, that's provided the cushion uh, for the government along with the RBI uh, dividend bonanza, but uh, what's the expectation now, both on the back of compliance measures as well as the strength of the economy, uh, on how much better you are likely to do? So, well, uh, we have uh, this thing about, uh, last year we collected about 19.58 lakh crores. And uh, this year we expect we, that uh, we would collect uh, somewhere around 22 lakh mm. crores. So that way there is an up of about 20 percent that way. So uh, 12 point something, 12 point percent. So that is what we are looking at. And uh, of course, uh, because of this uh, budget, uh, you see, uh, provisions that we have. So there is some plus and there is some minus. That's it's right. all quits that way. Uh, but uh, since the economy is growing and uh, the compliance is, uh, of course, uh, uh, becoming better day by day. We are getting more uh, data and the, on voluntary front mm. also uh, the taxpayers are responding. So therefore we expect that we would, uh, so for example as of today uh, the percentage increase in the revenue is about 20-21 percent mm. mm. which is uh, a very encouraging uh, number. So we expect that going forward during the at the end of the year we would close on a very positive note. 
Well, uh, we will also close on a very positive note. Uh, thank you very much to the CBDT chief and the CVIC chief for joining us here. We look forward to continuing this conversation at the CNBC TV 18 budget verdict, where we will see the two of you tomorrow. Appreciate you joining us here uh, this evening. But we've got a lot more questions for you, but unfortunately out of time. We are going to take a break here and return with more budget makers here from the CNBC TV 18 budget headquarters. We're back in a moment with more.